All right, we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. We would like to start by thanking the Department of the Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar possible. We are excited to have Molly Haskin with us today from United Through Reading. First of all, we wanna thank you so much for taking our initial poll when you first popped in here and we see that we have professionals joining us today. Thank you for being here. And we always welcome professionals who work with military connected children to our parent trainings. And I think you're going to find the information and tips we present present useful, but please note that our MSEC parent support webinars have been designed with parents as the target audience. But before we introduce ourselves, we want to share a little bit more about the MSEC and our mission. So the Military Child Education Coalition, also known as MSEC, is a nonprofit organization established more than 20 years ago, and our mission is to support all military connected children by educating, advocating, and collaborating to resolve education challenges associated with the military lifestyle. In 2005, MSEC formalized support and programming for military connected parents so that they may be empowered, informed, and proactive in supporting their children's educational journey. We strive to deliver informative and interactive webinars that address academic, social, and emotional issues associated with a military family lifestyle. Our vision is that every military connected child is college, work, and life ready. And now we have a few administrative announcements to get to before we continue. At the end of the webinar, we'd like to invite you to take our survey about today's presentation. We really would appreciate it if you took the two to three minutes it will require for you to give us your feedback. This is a key method we use to tell our funders of what we are doing, and it lets us know where we need to tweak things so that we can continue offering the very best training opportunities possible for you, the Military Connected Parents that we serve. You're also going to see a chat box on your screen where you can ask questions during the webinar. And we have Michelle Brashear, a parent educator with us from MSEC today, and she's going to be monitoring that chat box. So please feel free to use this feature in Zoom. You're also going to see PDF files in your chat box that state downloadable resources. This contains the resources and information relating to today's webinar. Please know that you can always go back and view this recording later if you want to review the material or if you experience any technical difficulties during the presentation. And as always, this webinar is being recorded. Now we're going to do a couple bios on ourselves here. My name is Kim Armstrong again. I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm currently stationed in Fort Lewis, Washington. Uh, this is our ninth duty station. I've been married to my active duty Army husband for 17 years. Uh, we have two military connected kiddos. Uh, one that is going into eighth grade and another that is going into fifth grade. And I have a, a special education background and I've been working with MSEC since 2017. I'm going to pass it over to Missy to introduce herself. Missy. Thanks, Kim. Good afternoon. My name is Missy Holstead, and I am delighted to be with each of you here today. Um, a little bit of background about myself. I've been married to an active duty Army soldier for over 17 years now, and we have three military connected children ranging in ages from 13, 11, and 7. I have um, a bit of different background. I've been with MSEC for almost two years. I've worked in the private sector for the Department of the Army and within the education realm. And again, we are excited to have each of you here with us today. And we are especially excited to introduce our special guest with us, Mrs. Molly Haskins. Miss Molly, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of the webinar today. Uh, my name is Molly Haskin and I too am an active duty Army spouse of 20 years. And I'm here with my role uh, with the organization United Through Reading. I've worked with this organization for five years now, and I allow uh, our program to be disseminated around the world to commands from all branches while actively holding down the responsibilities of a military spouse. I also have two active duty military connected children, ages 11 and 14, and I'm also a clinically certified speech language pathologist. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Molly. So let's get into what we are here today to talk about. Reading is the most important skill of a military child, and it can develop to an academic success and well-being. A family's role in reading starts at birth and continues throughout life. In this presentation, we will share ideas to spark that love of reading in children and develop a good reading habits for the entire military family. Today's objectives, we're going to first identify typical language and reading stages by age. Next, we will show ways to find just the right books. And finally, we will collaborate and share practical ideas on helping your military connected child grow into a great reader. Now, before we progress, we have another poll question we would like to ask each of you. What are the ages of your children? So you can see zero to five years of age, six to 12 and 13 plus years of age. And since I've been thinking about the four of us here today, we have the majority of our children ranging in ages from six to 12 to 13 plus. So that is probably nine children combined for all of us today. At this time, we are going to turn off our cameras so you can focus on the presentation. Kim? All right, thanks, Missy. All right, so we're gonna jump in here and we're gonna discuss the importance of reading for our military families. So military lifestyle, as we all know, includes those frequent relocations, transitions, separations from the service member, and a lot of changes. The average military child changes schools between six to nine times before they graduate from high school. Every child has the power to succeed in school with the support from their adults in their lives, especially the teacher and most importantly, the parents. Research has found that the frequency of shared book reading by parents is linked to children acquiring skills and knowledge that affect their later success in reading, writing, and other areas. In addition, students who read for pleasure averaged higher scores in English, math, science, and history than their non-reading counterparts. As students get older, reading skills play an important role in STEM, which is our science, technology, engineering, and math. The National Academics of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine found that positive child development and success in the area of physical health and safety, emotional behavioral competence, social competence, and cognitive competence is also linked to keeping routines, showing warmth and sensitivity in shared book reading. Furthermore, we have substantial accumulation of knowledge on how a nurturing and supportive environment and close family ties are all factors that help promote well being. Those shared reading nurtures those close family ties and connections. So, therefore, establishing and keeping a reading routine is one of the most important things we can do to help our military children succeed despite those PCS moves or dealing with deployments or even changing of schools. Now let's talk about how maybe we can stay connected through our reading. So underscoring the importance of how reading together builds and maintains connections in military families, we want to highlight a free program specifically for military families the United Through Reading Program. This connects military families who are separated, whether they're deployed or on a military assignment, and it provides bonding experience of shared story time, which include benefits of resiliency in a family. It eases the stress of a separation of the service member, spouse, and child. It cultivates a love of reading for those military-connected children, encourages literacy and language skills, and sometimes can even make those homecomings a bit easier. United Through Reading serves Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, Coast Guard, National Guard, Reserves, and Special Operation Forces for all types of separation, which can even include weekend drills, duty nights, and deployments. It also serves non-custodial parents, geo bachelors, and the wounded, ill, or injured at military facilities. At this, at this time, I'm going to ask Miss Molly Haskin from United Through Reading, and she's going to hop on here and kind of tell us a little bit more about this wonderful program, and especially some of the benefits that these families could experience by using it. Molly, 
Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Kim. Uh, United Fair Reading is a nonprofit organization that has served our military community for over 33 years. We just had a birthday and 33 looks amazing on us. We serve our military and veteran population through the bond and the gift of story time, which is a very simple mission, but highly impactful for our military families. United Through Reading provides hundreds of different high quality books, as well as the means for the service member to video record themselves reading to any special military connected child in their life. And we want these video recordings to be used on a daily basis. So they become part of our military connected children daily routine. Not only does that reinforce all the wonderful qualities of the read aloud experience that Kim just reviewed, but also it allows for that communication and connection with between the service member and that military connected child to be strong and supported and most importantly, as a military spouse, consistent, <laughs> uh, since we always are dealing with unexpected and unforeseen circumstances within our lives, having our military connected children, giving them this resource that they can utilize for any time, not just for deployments, but for any other reasons, uh, it is a real blessing. That is great information, Molly. Thank you for sharing that. And I know, you know, the military life can be hectic and crazy and having this at your fingertips is really fantastic. And, you know, when we connect with our families, even from a distance, um, it's so important. And, and can you share with us a little bit about the new app that United Through Reading has and kind of the process of how it works for our families that are listening? Absolutely. So United Through Reading offers to make the video recordings a free and secure app. And we like to call it your own personal story station. It's available for free on Android and iOS devices. And it's authenticated through the Troop ID platform, which many of you might be familiar with from other organizations like VetTix or Waves of Honor or those sort of uh, forums. And once you've downloaded and installed this free and secure app, your family can utilize it to make the video recordings to share back and forth between the service member and the military connected child. We have some ebooks already embedded in the app, so you can get started immediately upon download. And again, we provide all of those wonderful high quality books for free for service members to request from our website and from our different story station locations around the world. Of course, we encourage uh, service members and their children to choose books they might have at home as well to utilize in making recordings with the app. And the great thing is within the app, you can build your own library of recordings. And so the child is able to access whichever book and whichever recording they feel is most enjoyable for them at that moment. How fantastic is that? That is wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I hope families get a chance to download that app and be able to use it whenever they want. So I have just one more further question here. We're, we're sitting here now with such a long history of serving the military and veteran communities. How is United Through Reading remaining relevant to the families over the summertime when kids are not quite in school at this time? Is there something that y'all kind of do together? That's such a great question, Kim, especially as we're all sitting here as parents of military connected children. Uh, this summer, I'm very pleased to announce that United Through Reading partnered with DOD libraries around the world and across all installations and branches to be part of the summer reading program within the library system. So you'll, you'll see our logo available on library platforms and even better within the libraries themselves, we have provided a selection of free books that span different ages and different interests, as well as really great <laughs> library bag cinch bags and our app collateral postcard. So if you didn't get a chance to download the app from this webinar, you can also get that postcard and it walks you through the app download stages as well. And so we really encourage our military families to visit their local library on post or on base and pick up not only the free book in the cinch bag and the post card, but start their personal app recording libraries at that time.
That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Molly. I know my girls love going to the post on post libraries here and those summer reading programs are fantastic. So thank you for sharing all that great information with us. And at this time, I'm going to pass it back to Missy and she's going to talk a little bit about planting those reading seeds early. Missy. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, Molly. I did not know that United Through Reading celebrated their 33rd birthday. That is great. And what I especially liked on your questions that you talked to us about, do routine things routinely and how we use reading on a daily basis. That is fantastic. And I did download that app and it is a really cool app to use. So as Kim mentioned, let's look at planting these reading seeds and let's discuss some insights on building this literacy. Reading builds the print awareness or the operating instructions of a book, how to hold a book, turning the pages one at a time, reading lines of words from left to right, and making connections between the spoken and written words. This will increase vocabulary. Research has shown that most vocabulary is learned indirectly by students hearing and seeing words or being read to or reading a book on their own. Children also increase their vocabulary directly when parents and educators talk about the meaning of certain words. So for example, if a child never heard the word enormous, they would never say the word. If they've never heard it, said it, imagined it, consider the difficulty they can experience when they have to read and write it. Now let's think about building comprehension, the understanding and interpretation of what is read. They'll decode what they read, make connections between what they read and what they already know. So for example, you can read books about moving when you PCS or permanent change of station or being the new kid at a new school or saying goodbye. Ponder about this of what they read. So I thought about this of two military related books that we share in our family. And the first one being is called an, ABC, an Army ABC book. It's a board book. And the second one, which is near and dear to my heart, is The Kissing Hand. We read this book every transition and the start of every school year. It's just a fantastic book for us that we use as a military connected family. So let's think about developing that fluency that you see on the slide, the last bullet. Refluency is the rate of reading and being able to effectively and efficiently decode unfamiliar words along with gathering meaning. So reading at your home with your children will increase their fluency by listening to what fluent reading sounds like. For our older readers, listening to fluent reading is just as important, but also have them read independently with your familiar and easy literature to help them increase their fluency. Now we're going to move on with a brief introduction of language development and specifically looking at the accomplishments. So on this slide, you see birth to three years of age. Toddlers may pretend to read and they help you turn the pages and they're typically able to name familiar pictures such as cup, dog, or baby. They can typically talk about what they see in their favorite books. This is the age when they really start to love to be read to and listen to stories. Continue reading aloud even if they can't make it through an entire book. I know we've used Goodnight Moon and we've only probably got through the first two pages over and over again, but that's quite all right. Now let's look at ages three to four for children. This is where they'll look at the print awareness, learn the correct way to hold and handle the book like I mentioned. They can recognize some letters of the alphabet and they can understand that words are read from left to right and top to bottom. Some may even attempt to read and write on their own and this is really Really cool to see and watch and listen and they can begin to recognize that words tell a story and they might even love to retell the stories to you and identify repeated words. Young children love to be read to and listen to stories and participate in some simple literacy games too. 
Now on the next slide, we have a question for you that we'd like you to answer. If a child knows eight rhymes by the time they are four years old, they are four times as likely to read on grade level by the time they are what years old? Let's see what that answer is. C, correct, it is eight years. So Mem Fox is an Australian writer of children's books and an educational specialist in literacy. She states that a child who can recite eight rhymes by the age of four is four times more likely to be reading at grade level by the age of eight. And age eight is typically when a child is in third grade. So keep reading and reciting those nursery rhymes, even if you're like me for 10 years over and over again, listening to the songs in your van, it really helps and it can get your child to read at grade level in the future. And a book that we love by Mem Fox is Time for Bed. And it's that repetition throughout. Now, Kim's going to talk about five to six-year-olds. Thanks, Missy. Yeah, those repetition rhyming words, those are those are the best. Those little books that we've read so many times, we don't even need to read them anymore because we've kind of memorized them as a, as a parent. Um, they're fantastic. So let's move on. So yeah, age five and six. So now we're thinking of kiddos that are kind of getting into kindergarten, right? And at this point, they really should be able to kind of sound out those very simple words such as cat or dog or mat. Um, and they can also show the familiarity with the rhyming in the beginning sounds. So you you say, hey, what rhymes with cat and see if they can do that. And, and at this point, they, they really should be able to do that and predict maybe what happens in a story and answer basic questions about what was just read. This is the beginning of the foundation of, of comprehension, right? We want our kids to be able to comprehend what they're reading. And so it's really important to have those conversations with your kiddos during a story and say, hey, what's what's going to happen next? Another one is when they match those spoken words with written ones. And they're also going to, at this stage, learn how to begin to write those letters or even the small words. And they're going to do that, what we call inventive spelling. Those are my favorite times where you get a little letter from your kiddo and it's not quite exactly, but you kind of figure out what she's trying to say, even though it's spelled incorrectly. Those are, um, I cherish those little letters, but yeah, the inventive spelling is, is a great step and also learning. And then continue reading with and to your military child at this age. And research has shown that reading aloud works better than any other reading drills or expensive preschool programs. You can help to help a typical child learn how to read. So reading together also supports and nurtures those relationships between parent and child and builds a block for child, a building block for child wellness. Also, you can read together regardless of where you're stationed or even if you're in the middle of moving, such as we just did, it's important to keep those routines going as much stability as we can for these, these military connected kids. And we have another take a guess for you. And this one is reading on grade level by the end of third grade is important because students start to go from learning to read to reading to, and you probably all already know this, which is learn. That's correct. A learn. Yeah. So we want to keep in mind that our kids are learning how to read before third grade, but it's important to make sure they're where they need to be by third grade because they're going to start getting bigger things to say, hey, I want you to read this, and then we're going to talk about it and ask questions about it. And so we really want to make sure our children are understanding what they're reading. So that's going to lead us into struggles and some things that we can watch out as parents. So children learn their native language by exposure to that language. And unlike learning to speak, children do not naturally develop reading skills through exposure to text. Children need to learn how to read. And the research is clear. If children cannot read proficiently by the end of third grade, they may face those daunting hurdles to success in school and beyond. Third grade, like we said before, marks a pivot point in reading. Curriculum instruction varies state by state and school district by school district. Some reading curricula cover more aspects of literacy than others, while almost all programs have some research-based components. The structure of a program can make a big difference, according to Anders Rasmussen, principal of Wood Elementary School in Balsan Spa, New York. Since military families move very frequently, it is, 
it's, it is possible that your child will encounter a different way of how a particular teacher or school teaches reading. Watch if your child is reading gets stagnant, especially after moving to a different school, and be cautious of difficulty with that comprehension. At times, children may be able to decode text well, and they read fluently and beautifully, but they're not understanding what they're reading. So it's important that we ask the questions to make sure they are where they are. And these issues can go undetected from time to time. And this can be especially problematic for our military children who, as we said before, change schools so frequently and have different teachers. The result could even be a middle or high schooler who appear to read well, but they're really having trouble comprehending what they read. It's really important as parents to monitor what our kids are reading and kind of know where they are, you know, in the younger years when they get those assessments and figure out what level they're on and ask those questions. And if you notice that your child is struggling, please reach out to their teacher um, to get help to, with that reading comprehension. So now we are gonna chat again with Miss Molly um, and we're gonna talk about, you know, since military children face those learning gaps due to frequently frequent relocations was what we just talked about. Molly, what would you suggest parents can do to help their children stay on target when it comes to reading and those benchmarks being attained? Absolutely, this is so important. And I too have personal experience with this as my children have moved from district to district and I have seen different uh, curriculum used for literacy and reading. Research shows that parental involvement in children's reading is the most important determinant in developing language and literacy skills. So service members and spouses utilizing the United Through Reading app to continue to build literacy within the home environment and build that reading routine on a daily basis during PCS times, during times of separation, just during times of um, difficulties within, you know, a military related life, keeping literacy and reading as a forefront in a military family is going to help those children overcome any differences in schools and in uh, curriculum that they might encounter as they PCS from one location to another. The read aloud experience has been proven to help children actually increase literacy knowledge because when a parent reads to a child, they're going to choose some words or some books that maybe have advanced vocabulary or advanced lexical knowledge. And that child hearing those words will then start to assimilate that into their own vocabulary skills and, and build from there and also increase reading fluency because when we provide the book to go with the video recording, the child can be reading along with the service member and improving those reading skills without even realizing it. That's the best part. Um, and it's also a great way, as you mentioned, Missy, you know, reading books over and over. Sometimes we get tired of reading those books over and over as parents. <laughs> I will be the first to admit them. There are certain books I used to hide. So that my <laughs> Find them. Um, but when you have that video recording on the UTR app, the child can choose that book that brings them comfort that they feel familiar with and is probably actually helping them learn uh, literacy skills. So it, it's really a win-win for both the service member, the spouse, and of course, the military connected child. Absolutely. Molly, that's fantastic. And the fact that the parents are so involved with this process, right? It's not just the, 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 the looking at a, of a book or whatever. It's the parents' voice and the video recording that you said is where they're getting that information. And for kids to be able to listen to their parents read fluently is one of the best uh, ways for kids to learn how to read fluently themselves. So Fantastic information, Molly. And I know for us uh, as a family, we, you know, we just moved across the country and it's summertime. And so I was, I, I, I know what, uh, you know, grade level my girls are at on their reading. And so I said, hey, let's do a little trip to Barnes and Noble and I'm going to give you a little treat for your summer reading. And I want you to pick something that that is a good fit for you. And of course, my younger daughter grabs a book that is probably two grades below where she should be reading. Right. And so I said, hey, Evie, you know, let's 
let's pick something a little more your speed and a little more on your level. Um, and I only knew that because of what they were doing. So again, like you said, the importance of parents being super involved in their in their reading of their their kids reading is, is so important. So so thank you for sharing that. And I also, Molly, I saw recently on your website that United Through Reading launched a mobile story station, and this is in the capital region. What what exactly does this mean for United Through Reading? Can you can you kind of explain it to us just a little bit? Absolutely. We are so excited with the launch of our second mobile story station. Uh, we have had one in the San Diego region uh, for a few years now, and it travels up and down that West Coast to support installations of all branches. And the East Coast mobile story station will now start doing the same up and down, you know, the East Coast of the U.S. The mobile story station is, I'm sure we all remember bookmobiles, but this is the bookmobile to beat all bookmobiles because not only does it provide hundreds of new books that children can choose from, but it has built into the back of the story station a recording studio so that service members and hopefully their children with them can pick a new book, get right into this mobile story station and make a recording on that at that very time to start their family's app library. Um, it is meant to support units individually. It's meant to support events. It has been extremely well received in the DC region. So if you've already seen it or you've already participated in an event uh, where it was present, thank you because we've gotten nothing but wonderful feedback. Um, and it, we are always looking to support additional units or additional uh, events with our mobile story stations that we can continue to serve our military and veteran community. That is so fantastic. I do remember bookmobiles as a child. So this is probably even better and the latest and greatest of technology. Um, how fantastic that they can come up and down the coast and, and do all the things for the family. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, now we're going to pass it back to uh, Missy and she's going to talk a little bit about those, those possible warning signs for our kiddos when they're learning how to read. Missy? Thanks, Kim. So I'm just going to, after listening to Molly talk about this great app, and um, I do love that you can keep a recording in your library that you create, and they do get a tangible uh, book. And the fact that you said that keeping literacy and reading is in forefront is imperative. And this is where we transition and look at this slide and see some students might show struggles as young as preschool and kindergarten. The following you see on the screen might might be early warning signs. Children might have difficulty with noticing and naming these rhymes or the pronunciation problems, sounding out unknown words, or remembering words that they've seen many times before, perhaps remembering the idea in a story, or reading like you talk instead of word by word. Parents are their children's best advocate. So if you notice increased struggle, or if you wonder if your child has trouble comprehending text, it's important that you address this issue with your child's teacher or pediatrician. And the earlier you can identify if your child has a learning struggle or sooner, you can provide intervention and make a huge difference in your child's academic performance and self-esteem. So continue with discussing how you can support your military child's reading at home. Let's look at the next slide where you can help with your beginning reader. And this is all kinds of fun, I just love this. You can practice with the sounds of language by teaching the rhymes that we've touched on three times already, reading those short poems and those songs, like those nursery rhymes, play simple word games, like Kim mentioned, how many words can you rhyme with cat or bat? Have your child take that spoken word apart and put them back together, like cat, C-A-T. Practice the alphabet by pointing out letters or words wherever you see them and by reading alphabet books. You might notice too when you're driving that your child sees that subway sign or McDonald's sign or even the stop sign and they can read that to you. Praise them for this. Listen to your child 
read words and books from school, your child might be given a sight word list that you can make into games. And they might have books with repeated text and picture clues. So children might also um, memorize this familiar text and they're gonna read it back to you. And that's okay. Two of the three of our kids did it by memorization. Make it part of your routine. Like we said, do routine things routinely. So I turned my camera back on and I found a book that we used frequently, Good Night Moon. And basically we wanna walk through the text and graphics and identify with them and talk. You focus on having fun and light things with them to read and you, it's no pressure for the kids where you take these picture walks. So you'll see in Good Night Moon, children may tell you in their own words what is happening by looking at these illustrations. So if you say you use, um, what do you see? And they'll tell you, I see a cow. What is the cow doing? You can prompt them and then they could tell you, they might say the cow's up in the air and then you could then validate it by reading the word below with them. Or I like this um, on the other page too, where you see a comb and you see a brush, you can use props to go along with that story. So go pull that tangible item out, like the brush that you have upstairs and show them, where's the brush in this book? And they point it to you and then you hold it up for them. So you change the setting of this reading and use a butterfly. Um, you can not use this type of book, but you can use a book if they're interested about butterflies or insects, things that you see outside and keep all these fun board books that I've pulled out of our little treasure chest. Um, keep them low for kids on the shelf so they could just pull them out and read them as much as they want. And I'm going to turn my camera back off. And I want to talk about on the next slide, the phonemic awareness, the understanding sounds in spoken words, and an understanding of phonics, knowing that letters and print correspond to sounds are the most basic first steps to becoming a reader. We're gonna watch a short video on phonomic awareness. Please notice how the dad in this video engages his child by playing a simple game to get her to learn how to listen to sounds instead of words. Well, I think we're having some technical difficulties. So we'll come back to the video, but it, the video is in the chat box. We could see if we could pull it up um, through our browser. But this video basically shows that you can use Legos to pronounce the sound. You can also like look at things in your house of dominoes or things you have potentially around your house already. And this is just a great tool to validate the phonemic awareness with your child. So let's look at the next slide. If your child is already a reader, you can help your child by reading by building reading accuracy. Um, you can, if your child's reading out loud, you can point out words missed and help read the words correctly. So so if you stop to focus on a word, you have your child reread the whole sentence to be sure that he or she understands the meaning. You can help develop reading comprehension. So ask about those new words, like talk about what happened in the story. Ask about the characters, the places or the events that took place. Ask what new information they have learned from the book. Make mind movies. This is something fun. Describe what the scene looks like in your head and talk about how it makes you feel. You can really relate what they're reading about your life experiences and their life experiences. So we do have a chat box question for you. How can military families use reading to relate the military lifestyle and children's experiences? While you are writing in the chat box, 
Kim and I are going to turn our videos back on and show you a few books that we use in our families that you can use um, in yours if you haven't already. So one book that I really enjoy with our kids is Stand Tall, Molly Lou Lemon, written by Patti LaBelle. This book is fantastic as it really teaches children about self-esteem and to be proud of who you are. And we can relate to our military lifestyle within our own family. Another fabulous book we like in our house is Unstoppable Me. It um, is 10 Ways to Soar Through Life by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. And one of the 10 lessons in this book that you see, there's each, there's different numbers throughout. But the one that we really like, that I like to read to the kids is Welcome to the Unknown. That change is a good thing and change, it happens every day, which is very relevant to the lifestyle we live in the military. Kim, what do you have? So I brought with me today one of my kids' favorites. It is called Be Kind. We absolutely love this book. And it is so important for military-connected children to remember to be kind to one another, right? They're often moving. They're often the new kid. And we want to just accept everyone and be kind and, and embrace new kids that are coming to our school. So in the story, we have this sweet little girl, and she finds... Um, that she spills grape juice on herself and all the kids are laughing and she's very upset. But one little friend says, hey, you know what? I like the color purple. I think it's okay to have grape juice on you. And so she showed one little kind thing to her friend and therefore her friend went and did another kind thing for someone else. And then they did something else. So it just talks about spreading kindness throughout your community. It talks about spreading kindness throughout the whole country and beyond. And so it's not only the color purple, which is the color of the military child, but it's also just reminds our kids to be kind to one another, especially when you're a, a military child. So that's the book that we really enjoy, uh, Missy. <laughs> I love, I, we have Be Kind as well, and that is a great book too. It's so good. So we're going to turn our videos back off. And again, we're just going to touch where you encourage your child to read on their own. They look at the page pages to consider designating like a few minutes every day where everyone in the family mom dad um, children you have that reading nook or they read on the couch just having the same set routine it's really effective for children rereading those familiar books with your child also is great and children read need practice in reading comfortably using books they know so you can alternate with them how about you read one page and i'll read a page um, and as molly mentioned earlier get involved in the summer reading program and the link is in the chat box about the department of defense that offers this great summer reading program that both kim and molly spoke about um, it's just a great thing. And I looked up the theme for this year is read beyond the beaten path. Now, Molly, it sounds like military families and their service members have a wonderful opportunity to access United through reading within the Department of Defense library system. So how are you helping to ensure the summer reading success for our military connected children? Absolutely. And it really goes back to the slides you all just had previously about choosing books that relate to our military children. Um, on our website, unitedthroughreading.org, you actually can go and browse our selection of well over 200 titles, and they're even broken into categories. So you could select from books that are most relevant to your military child especially during things that might be going on in their life or just over the summer months. Because as research shows during the summer, if children just continue to read six books, <laughs> they'll really help keep those academic uh, achievements that they've made during the school year and, and be able to easily go into the next school year. So we have books in the libraries. We have books available on our website. And again, we will send them at no cost uh, to the service member and their family. And then to make things extra fun, <laughs> we also have an app summer reading challenge. So if service members use our app, 
to make video recordings for their military connected children. After every few recordings, we'll send a special prize to that child as well. And it is a really fun way to keep reading relevant and fun and modeled in the home. So if the service member is making those recordings and reading to their children, the children are seeing the value that the service member is placing on reading and getting that reinforcement with a fun app related challenge prize too. And our app reading challenge document, I believe is also in the chat box. Um, so I encourage you all, it will run through August um, and the prizes are cumulative as well. Fantastic, thanks Molly. Kim? Thanks, Missy. Yeah, that sounds like some great information, Molly. And I know my kids love a good challenge. So if they're, they have an incentive, then, you know, maybe they're more likely to read the books. So we have another chat box question for you. We want to know what method you use to find the right book for your child. You know, every parent is different. Every, everyone has their own way of finding these books. So I just would like to know, kind of thinking, you get to thinking about what you do as a parent to find that right book. And so to help our kiddos enjoy reading, we really want to pick the book that is, is just right for them. And a just right book is a book that your child can read almost perfectly with no help at all. But books that are too easy can make reading time boring. And while those that are too difficult can, of course, bring on that frustration and your child may even end up skipping parts and fail to understand what's really happening. Helping your child to find that just right book or the perfect book for their reading level can be simple by using the five finger rule. So we're gonna talk about what exactly is that five finger rule. And I'm gonna turn on my camera so I can explain it to you because it's quite fun. Um, for your kids to do. And so what we do is we run to the library and I say, pick the book that you would like to read. And of course I have, um, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory here, which is a chapter book. And so what you're gonna do is have your child pick up the book off the shelf and open it up to anywhere in the middle of the story, right? and watch them and say, okay, I'd like you to read this paragraph for me out loud. And as you're listening to your child read, you're looking over their shoulder and you're reading along with them. And every time they get a word wrong, I want you to count it on your hand, right? So if they get zero to one words uh, incorrect, then it's quite easy. It's, it might be almost a vacation book for them. If they miss two or three words, that is a just right book. We don't want them to miss too many because then they're not going to understand it, but too little. It might be not, you know, exactly where they need to be. If they miss four words, it might be a little challenging for them, and that's okay, but maybe this is something that can be suitable, um, maybe if you choose to help them to read this book. Or five, same thing. If they're very interested in it, but they miss a lot of words, you can say, hey, you know, maybe we can read this together as, you know, uh, uh, together, and, and I'll read it to you, and you can watch me read it, and then we can do it later. Or or you can even say, um, you know, let's save this book for Christmas time, and I think by the time we get to that point in the year, you might be able to read it. And so again, that's another incentive to maybe have them wanting to read it. So some guidelines too to remember is that this doesn't work for everybody all the time. It's, it's very dependent on the child and on the book. Um, but we encourage you to try it. And on the other side, if you know your child's going to struggle to enjoy that story, uh, you know, you could tell them to read it later in the year, like we said, or, or have it, you know, maybe buy the book and set it on the shelf as an incentive for them to keep practicing to get to that level. Uh, we've also included a resource uh, in the resource, a link on selecting uh, culturally responsive children's books, which are really great. Um, and, and it's just more information on how to broaden the spectrum of what your kiddos are picking picking up and actually reading. And also we don't want to we don't want to get rid of their interest. So if they're interested in something and they have a spark of interest, we really want to feed into that. And so sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to find that just right book for them that interests them, but uh, don't give up. You know, you can ask your librarian or or the bookstore clerk and they can they can definitely help you with that. So I'm going to turn my video back off and we are going to keep moving along with their presentation and we're going to talk about middle school and high school students. Thanks, Kim. So as Kim said, we want to keep that love of books and reading in our kids all the way through school years and beyond. So let your teen choose what to read. Avoid any urge to censor their choice of books. At the same time, make sure they read books that contain content that matches their level of understanding and maturity. So if you have that reluctant reader, look at books that specifically target reluctant teen readers, such as those offered through 
Sisters, Story Share, and Saddleback Educational Publishing. Um, those websites and references are listed in the chat box and they're great to use. Capitalize on their interests that Kim just mentioned. If your teen likes sports like swimming or football or celebrities, for example, consider magazines that cover these favorite topics. Reading online does count, whether it's articles or topics that interest your teen, we do recommend that your teen knows how to search reputable and safe sites when online. Understood.org has a great suggest suggestion. Tie reading to social media. So encourage your teen to follow maybe a blog on a topic that interests them and have your teen read it to you in interesting tidbits. Bloom, empowering the military teen, is a safe, nonpartisan platform for military kids to share their stories and be empowered. They have a variety of topics that relate to the military lifestyle, and their content is mainly by military teens and young adults about topics that are of interest to military teens. Another option specifically for military children is Military Kids Connect. It's an online community for military children aging in ranges six years of age through 17, and it provides access to age appropriate resources to support children dealing with unique, unique excuse me, psychological challenges of the military lifestyle. Now, let's continue talking about what your teen is reading. Ask them what they think of a story and make connections with ideas or issues that are relevant to their life. Keep up with what they're reading. If you can, read a few pages of their books yourself so you can discuss the story. You may find that these books provide a neutral ground on which to talk about sensitive subjects. Play games that utilize reading. So word and vocabulary building games like Scrabble, Boggle, or Bananagrams are great games to play. Crossword puzzles provide opportunities for learning new words and spelling practice too. As we've mentioned, reading aloud has many benefits. This is true for all age groups and a way to encourage reading aloud is to pick a story together and then have everyone take turns reading a chapter out loud. This incorporates kids of all ages and helps build in quality family time. Our family chose um, a specific book where I read it to them, the older one read it to them, and the younger one who couldn't read listened. And then after we finished the book, we talked about it throughout, and then we watched the movie. So service members who are gone can be reading the same book as their child and have a conversation or share their thoughts on the book. And United Through Reading offers a free reading app that we've talked about, and it's easy to use for all age levels and it works well when a service member is away from the family. Now we'd like to invite Molly to come back on and discuss some ways to get your middle school, high school student more engaged with reading. Yes, because we absolutely don't want to leave out our military teens. And sometimes we look at them and we say, wow, they're so resilient. They're so strong. They've been through so many things. And we think they don't need that, that read aloud experience. But in truth, they still do. United Through Reading offers many chapter books for our military teens, and a lot of them are the classics, but we have stumbled upon, and I'm so glad to see a new genre that is very popular these days, and that is the graphic novel. And it's a, it's a wonderful hybrid between a comic book, but it's still a real uh, story. And the best part is many classics have been turned into graphic novels. This summer in our DOD libraries, one of the graphic novels we provided that are available to pick up is actually the Iliad. <laughs> um, and so this is a great book for our military teens to grab. It's a summer read that's fun and easy and light, and yet it is still a classic and it conveys that important story uh, that has withstood a lot of time. We also encourage service members to pick a chapter book and maybe just read that first chapter on video to send to their child if they are away 
or separated. And the reason we suggest that is because our military teens still need to feel that intentional support from their service member. And a video recorded story is a gift because the service member themselves reading and only Oh, I think we lost your audio there, Molly. Doors for discussions as well. Um, sometimes talking to teens is not the easiest, especially if you're calling them on the phone. There's not a lot coming back at you, but then you could start off by using the book to, to spark a conversation. And that might lead to other conversations that are important for the service member to have with their teen. So there's lots of ways for our, our military teens to stay supported through United Through Reading, uh, even though they are able to read the book themselves. I really like that, Molly. Thank you for letting sharing that with us because I, I thought about too when we talked um, prior to this uh, webinar about reading that chapter book where the service member reads a chapter, your child reads a chapter. And this can also be relatable to family members that live afar. So because of the military lifestyle we live, we make these transitions every few years and we're not always close in proximity to family. So I can relate where my I have two sisters and they chose a chapter book with our children and they would all take turns to read specific pages or even chapters to talk about it and it's a fantastic segue into getting your kids to talk um, to others and your family and I just I think that's a great idea so thank you for giving all this fabulous information. So we do have an additional um, chat box question for you all. Um, what additional or innovative ideas do you have to get your older military kids to read? And we've talked about a couple, but as you respond in the chat box, I'm gonna talk about a few more ideas that we might not have touched on. So you can also have your teen take over reading to a younger sibling at bedtime where they read something and they might find their siblings enthusiasm for stories contagious and they want to keep doing it. We've talked about visiting that library together. Try to make it an event where you share some quality one on one shoulder to shoulder time with your kiddos and enjoy and everyone chooses a few books. Continue to model read. Like we said, your teenager will still follow your reading habits, though we might not know it. Let them see you read, make comments, and share interesting passages with your teens. Kids often enjoy listening to audiobooks. The integrated DOD MWR Libraries website delivers free online resources to service members and families, and it includes free ebooks and audiobooks. And Michelle has put that link in the chat box for you as well. Kim? All right. Thanks, Missy. So we're at our final thoughts and we're going to wrap up this webinar here. And today, you know, we, we discussed how to grow those great readers. And we, we also discussed how we can get those military connected children all those fantastic benefits from the shared reading. We, they, they get the academics, the well-being, the family ties, uh, tackling progress, especially after PCSs or moving or possible separations from the service member. And we also talked about supporting that reading at home and all the various things you can do together as a family. And one of, of course, the most important ways is to read to and with your child on a daily basis. So we hope we've given you something that you possibly didn't know before and something that you can kind of put in your back pocket to use when helping with your kiddos getting ready to read and just kind of planting those reading seeds and things we can all do to help our military connected kiddos, especially the fantastic uh, information we got from Miss Molly um, with the United Through Reading program, which is also just wonderful and fabulous. So we want to thank you again for joining today's webinar, and we'd like to invite you to take our survey. We can do that by clicking on the survey link right inside the box on your screen. It will only take a few minutes for you to take. Um, we appreciate your feedback. You can see the QR code right there. You just hold your phone right up to it 
it'll take you right to the survey. And once you're there, click on webinar survey and you're gonna need the four digit number, which is on your screen there, it's 5122. And be sure to hit submit at the end. If you don't fill out the survey now, following this webinar, you will receive an email invitation to take this. And this, of course, as we said before, is a tool just to make those ongoing improvements to our webinar series, add new topics of interest and provide feedback for our funders. If you missed one of our previous webinars, or especially if you would like to share this session, the recordings can be found on our website at militarychild.org. Under programs, training, and initiatives, click on four parents in the middle of the screen and you will see the webinars that we have to offer. We have quite a few out there and they're all fantastic. Also, we invite you to check out um, our pressure, professional development well, um, if you're interested in doing this and all of the opportunities we have for professional development, you can also go to our website, militarychild.org, and please friend us on Facebook and follow the MSEC on Twitter. Also, we invite you to check out SchoolQuest. This is an online interactive tool that is absolutely free, and it is designed to support our highly mobile military families and students. It has many resources and tips to help students achieve academic success and well-being, so you could sign up to today by using that QR code. It's fantastic. And I did mention it is free. Um, also, if you have questions, concerns, or educational related issues for your military connected children, no need to worry. Our military student consultants or MSCs are the premier source to help you with all of your questions. They can easily be found by that email on your screen. It's msc at militarychild.org or the phone number that you see. Missy? Thanks, Kim. So if you're interested in getting a certificate of completion, please complete the online survey. And if you would like to receive a webinar survey for a recorded webinar, please contact Callie Abernathy, as you see on the screen and in the chat box. Now, we would love for you to join us for further webinars. The next one will be on Tuesday, July 26th for the college application process for military families. And then on Wednesday, July 27th for back to school basics. All of our webinars start at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Michelle has put those links to register in the chat box. We would like to give a special thanks to the Department of Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar possible. And again, thank Molly Haskin from United Through Reading for joining us today. Thank you for your interest and participation, and we all hope you have a great rest of your day.